morning, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is that you may be joining me from. Hey, Ms. D, welcome. How are you, lady? Hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving. So how was it? How was it? <laughs> I uh, had my first one here. Hey, Penny Love, thank you for being here. I got my glasses on today, y'all. I can see you. <laughs> Most days I can't see for squat on this little iPhone that I use here for, uh, for Periscope. Hey, hey, so how was you all's holiday? Hey, Assam, thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, hey, Julie, good to see you, my friend. Welcome. Thank you for being here. So how are you guys? How is everybody? I'm excited to be here this morning. I know it's evening for many of you. Um, hey there, Mystic. Good to see you as well. So let me introduce myself real quickly. Let me tell you guys, first of all, because I always got to tell a story, right? So I have been struggling with what to call myself. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you caught me live too, Julie. It's been a long time since I've seen you live myself. I think, uh, for Halloween was the last time I got to see you live was when you were the unicorn. I love those eyelashes. You were so glittery and sparkly. So y'all know I get caught up on the shiny. <laughs> huh? Today's your birthday. Happy birthday, Penny. Very well, very happy birthday. Right after Thanksgiving. So we are thankful for Penny's birthday. How about that? Thank you guys for the uh, the hearts. Thank you. Look, I can't see y'all because on this, on the, the, I'm on the iPhone, I was missing everything. So I said, you know what? Let me get my little glasses out today. So let me tell you guys a real quick story. So if you've been following me for a while, and I know that some of you have, um, I've kind of gone through the gamut of what, you know, of being here on Periscope. I coped with my diagnosis of lupus here on Periscope. Um, I've cooked good foods here on Periscope. I've talked business. I've talked fashion. I swear, I think I done talked about everything there is to talk about on, on Periscope. But I feel like I'm kind of back to full circle to where I'm supposed to be. Um, houses, yeah, I'll be talking a little bit about real estate. That's more my, my, that's my wheelhouse. Um, financial stuff, um, commission type things, stuff that, that you can actually make real money at. That's more my, my wheelhouse. And I was running from that. Uh, and now I'm kind of like running back towards that because that's what I'm an expert in. That's what I'm good at talking about. I'm good at pinching a penny until Abraham Lincoln is screaming for mercy. And, you know, so that's kind of where my, my wheelhouse is. So um, I noticed that everybody on um, Periscope kind of has these really cool titles. And I was like, what do I call myself? So I went and put this to a, a poll, if you will, asked some of my peers, what should I call myself? I was like, my program is called From Coping to Cash Flow. And they're like, you should call yourself the Cash Flow Consultant. So now that I've given you guys the story, let me introduce myself. <laughs> For those of you who have no clue who I am, my name is Kelly McRae, and I am a Cash Flow Consultant. <laughs> I like it. What do you guys think of it? You like it? So anyway, so basically what has happened is uh, back in February, I was given a diagnosis of lupus. And at that time, I was, uh, it was advised for me to go on disability. You love it? Awesome. Thank you. So I, was I had to walk away from a 17-year career in traditional real estate. So I, I keep saying that, but now I guess in essence, I'm kind of back to that again um, in certain aspects. <clears throat> So what I realized during that time, obviously, was I could cry my eyes out about having lupus. I could be upset about it. And the fact that I had lost my job, so to speak, or lost my career, that was very sad for me because I obviously cash control consultant. I like it. It's like, keep controlling your cash, baby. Um, you know, but I, so I had to realize that the bills still kept coming regardless of having to walk away from my career and everything that I knew as far as how to earn money, so to speak. And, you know, I had to still find a way to make my car payment, pay my rent or my mortgage, uh, you know, get new glasses if I needed them, the whole nine yards. So I started sharing initially things that I was doing as a hobby, um, you know, Amazon, FBA, blogging, affiliate marketing, that kind of thing. But I realized that if I was really gonna help people it couldn't be hobby stuff. It had to be things that I truly had an in-depth knowledge of and things that could really help people. So, um, you know, for those of you, again, that are watching me in the States, I scope now 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Bangkok time. So as you look at the, these, these light colored walls, this is daylight coming through the, the door for me. I'm on the other side of the moon is what I call it. I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. 
and I left the States initially and went to Nicaragua. So in spite of my illness, if Robin were on here, she'd love that I said that, Robin Dix, because that's the name of her group. In spite of my illness, I still had to find a way to make my dreams happen, and I still had to find a way to take care of myself. And I had always wanted to live abroad and travel the world. So they said, girl, you need to go on disability, and I bought a plane ticket. So I'm here because I can teach you guys how to pinch your pennies and still live a decent life and how to make money in a non-traditional manner. So that is why I am the cash flow consultant because I'm teaching you how to keep control of your cash. I like that. Keep control of your cash, but also how to earn money and how to make that money go further. So today's topic is five tips <clears throat> to hold on to your money during this holiday season because we all know that when the holidays come we kind of lose our minds right we got to go out and we got to we got to join the secret santas and we have to donate you know 15 turkeys to the homeless and we have to spend on mama daddy you know auntie joe nim and all of the N and nims you know what i'm saying you know boothy and nim and mama and nim and all of them and nims you know so but you have to realize that sometimes the and nims need to take a back burner they could take care of themselves so here are my five tips my very first one and i tried to put this in order um, of what i felt like was the most important so my first one is the least important if you will so the first one is create a list and stick to it so if you've got a list that you know boopy and them only get something that costs five dollars if you see something at the store that's really really cute and you add a new nm to your list or you add a new gift to your list, that's, that's a bad idea. Don't do it because now you're spending money that you didn't designate and you need to stay within a budget. Just like your household budget, just like your grocery budget, you know how they say don't go to the grocery store hungry? Don't go holiday shopping all geeked out and excited about all the, oh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that, ooh, ooh, ooh. Make yourself a list ahead of time of who you're going to buy for and what your spending limit is for those people that you're going to buy for. So if you got your children, your spending budget obviously is gonna be higher for them because they hold the place closer here than everybody else. And if this is for Cousin Agnes, then Cousin Agnes might have a $5 spending limit and you need to stick to that and you need to make sure that you write a list and when you get to the store, if exactly, make that list and check it twice. Exactly, Julie. If Cousin Agnes is not on the list, then cousin, cousin Agnes, I don't, I don't care if you saw something that said Cousin Agnes needs this. Then that's, some, that's for somebody else's Cousin Agnes, not your Cousin Agnes, because she ain't on your list. So stick with your list, okay? That's the first tip. The second one is only buy for essential people. So again, going back to the list and going back to the children, if you will, or your mama or your daddy that hold your heart, your heartstrings, Cousin Agnes, again, might be further down the list unless Cousin Agnes was your favorite cousin. Y'all grew up together. You, you tied together at the hip, that kind of thing. But make sure you're only buying for essential people. And this is not necessarily um, geared towards your family members as much as it, is, as it is towards your work people. Because you all know every year at the office, they come around with that list. Would you like to be on the secret Santa list? And we all like, ooh, I wonder what I'll get. Now, you know, last year and the year before last, you got that ugly sweater. And the year before that, you got those socks that had the five toes separated that you don't ever wear because they're uncomfortable and they're ugly. Who wears those? Okay? So you all geeked up about what you're going to get for Secret Santa, and then you spending money for Secret Santa, and you just going to re-gift what you got anyway. So stay off the Secret Santa list. And besides, most of the time you end up buying for that girl that you don't even like. You be talking about her exactly. Junk. Nonsense. And then you end up, you find out when she opened up her gift, you're like, ooh, I don't even like her. I can't believe I spent my $20, $15, or whatever it was. I can't stand her. <laughs> so you don't know, wasting money on somebody that's non-essential, so to speak. So keep off those secret Santa lists. Do not be buying for just every old, any old body just because, you know, hold on to that money because that money is about your future. Put that money on a credit card debt or, you know, in an in a IRA or something like that that's going to truly benefit you and your family. Okay, number three, limit your spending budget even for your essential people. So when my children were at home, 
um, I would tell them, especially, you know, because we the, the whole Santa Claus thing, most of these kids, look, they got Google. They know better. They, they three years old know how to swipe on an iPhone. They are already aware that you the one spending your hard-earned dollars. That's why they making sure they hint early on what they want because they know Santa doesn't exist. So now that they know the truth, let's just be real about this thing. Limit the amount of money that you plan on spending for those people. So when my children were um, kids, I would tell them, each of you have, <clears throat> this is your budget. This is how much money I'm going to spend on each of you for the holidays. So when you bring me your list, you better make sure that you, you know, if it, if it doesn't fit in, um, you always set a limit. Yes, because that's good. That's just good sense. Otherwise, you go haywire. It's like, how, who's been in Target? And I know I'm guilty. Or Walmart. And you, you got to, you like, I'm just going to get some bread and I'm going to get some milk and I'm going to get some cheese. And then you get to the to the uh, checkout line, you got a whole cart full of nonsense. Come on, I know you're guilty, because I'm guilty. We all do it. We just ride through the aisles. We're like, ooh, well, you know, I didn't think about that I needed. You didn't need it. But I didn't think about So let me put this in here. And let me put that in there. And let me put this. And you went for something that was going to cost you $20, and now your bill is $180. <laughs> I've been at the checkout at the counter like, did I really need this? Let me put this back. Putting putting stuff where it didn't belong because I done filled up my cart with nonsense. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, make sure that you are taking making sure you have a budget for those uh those not for those essential people and stick to it. Because again, they on the list. So this goes back to number one, where again, your people, you got a list, you know how much you're planning on spending, and if you're dealing with children. Now they have a level of expectation. And so when they put 15 things on their list and they only get five, when they are upset on Christmas morning, you could say, well, remember I told you that you only had X number of dollars in order to spend. And these were the things that you told me were the most important. So that's what I got for you. Because chances are it's going to be gone three days after Christmas anyway. The novelty will have worn off. So make sure, again, that you are... Um, limiting what you're spending on those people. Thank you guys for the hearts. Listen, if you guys think you're getting any value from this, please swipe and share. Um, I really would appreciate that. And I definitely like the love. Tap, 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 tap. I love those little hearts. If you all are watching me on the replay, please know that you can still tap it up and give me love and you can still swipe and share. I really do appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So number four is don't get sucked in by the discounts on things that you had no intentions of buying. And we are all guilty of that too. We go in and we see that it's 70% off. Well, okay, so here's the thing. You're like, I'm going to save 70%. But if you weren't going to buy it in the first place, guess what? You will save 100% by not buying it now. I just saved you an extra 30%. Say thank you. <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you very much for helping me keep control of my cash. So... Don't get suckered in by those, uh, thank you for inviting followers, I appreciate that. Don't get suckered in by those discount things. And we all know that if you would have gone to wherever it is in May and they would have had it, and let's say it was $30 in May, that when you go after Thanksgiving, that it's actually now $50. So the money that you're saving, you ain't really saving it anyway. They still getting their $30. Come on now, act right. You know better. You know better. <laughs> So don't get suckered in by that nonsense because, again, how much did you really save if it wasn't on your list? You didn't save what you thought you did because it wasn't on the list. And two, if it's outside of your budget, now you've gone and spent money that you didn't necessarily designate for it that, again, you could have put on something better. Okay? So my last tip is... And this is the biggest one, because remember I told you that it's the win order of importance in my mind. But the last one is don't use credit cards. I'm waiting. <laughs> I feel like that's a big one. It's like, boom, I just gave you the big one. But no, for real, the reason I say don't use credit cards is because you're not really saving, especially, okay, so you got suckered in. 
and you spent that, you got that 70% discount, and now depending on your, I think so too, Mystic, I think so. So now you're thinking that you saved money, but you got interest rate, um, interest on top of that now, so did you really save? And most of these credit cards have an annual, um, an annual fee. So you got the interest rate, the annual fee, and what you paid for. Okay, and if you bought on the Secret Santa for your non-essential people, you paying for them for how long now? So again, that to me is the biggest one because you're racking up long-term debt that you're paying interest on nonsense. Because let's face it, much of what we buy during the holidays is nonsense. It's things that we wouldn't have normally invested in. There are things that we, for people we wouldn't have normally been buying for. And so it truly is taking money out of your legacy. And that's what I call it. It's your legacy. And people don't think of it that way. You're spending, you know, even if it's 2%, you're spending 2 to 26% interest on things that are non-essential that don't really make a lot of sense. They're not going to put your kids through college. They're not going to contribute to your retirement fund. They're not going to contribute to your health care costs if you need them. And trust me, I know the health care costs come out of nowhere. Hello, lupus. You know, no, I, nobody told me I was going to get it, and nobody told me I was going to have to walk away from my job. But guess what? I got it. I had to walk away from my job, and now I have medical costs that I didn't have before. You're spending money on non-essential things that are going to take away from your legacy. And that is kind of how I look at staying within my budget. It's how much am I taking away from my legacy for these non-essential items? So that is why staying, leaving your credit cards at home is the biggest deal. Spend cash. That way when it's done, it's done. And when that envelope or your wallet or whatever it is that you, that you took cash out for, when it's gone, it's gone. So then that really makes you evaluate truly who you're buying for and what you're spending. So if you got there and Cousin Agnes wasn't on the list and you got everything in your cart, and and your bill is $220 and all you brought was $20, Cousin Agnes's gifts got to go back because you only have $200, so where's this extra 20 coming from? And if you didn't bring your credit cards, you don't have a fallback plan, right? Which means you get to hold on to that money. So those are my five tips for keeping control of your cash from Kelly the Cash Flow Consultant. I like that title. <laughs> But anyway, so I hope you all had a beautiful Thanksgiving. Um, I know we're working our way towards Christmas, so there will be a lot more things as I will address um, holiday spending as we go forward to kind of keep your mind on really what your, your major goals are. Because the last thing I want you to have is your New Year's resolution is to get out of debt because of your holiday spending. So we all know we're going to eat them Christmas cookies. We're going to have those rum balls. So let's not make a, you know, trying to get our, be our both of our bottom lines together, the uh, New Year's resolution. Although I could use something on my bottom line, my bottom line bony in the back. <laughs> all right, guys. So I'm going to get my bony behind off of here. Again, for those of you who have no clue who I am, my name is Kelly McRae. I am the cash flow consultant, helping you keep more dollars in your pocket, uh, especially for those of us that can no longer work a traditional job. We really have to make our dollar stretch. So I will see you guys again on Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Bangkok time. And uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I'm glad it was great advice. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the hearts. And have an amazing weekend. I will talk with you guys soon. And as they say here in Thailand, thank you. It's good to see you too, Miss Julie. As we say here in Thailand, Sawadee Ka. Bye, guys.